All right, this is a complete degen bet. $240 on the goddamn coin toss. It's once upon a time in Hollywood at Super Bowl 56, and I'm confidently throwing a thousand dollars on four different bets. Here's bet numero uno. Many Super Bowls have been decided by dominant pass rushes taking quarterbacks out of their comfort zone. It happened to Brady twice, it happened to Mahomes last year, and this time it's happened to Joe Cool. No, 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 not that Joe. This Joe. You probably don't need me to remind you that the Bengals offensive line is absolute poverty, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Burrow was sacked a league high 51 times in the regular season. Heck, two weeks ago, he was sacked nine times in one game. Do you really think that offensive line isn't going to buckle against this guy? The most dominant defensive player of his generation, Aaron Donald? Or this guy, a former Super Bowl MVP? LA had the third most sacks in the league this year with 50. They're gonna get it smoking Joe all game long. But here's another thing being overlooked about LA's D-line. They're also nasty against the run. They ranked sixth best in rush defense during the regular season, right behind the Bengals actually. They're gonna stop Joe Mixon. Now, I know Mixon finished third in the league in rushing, but the man hasn't had a 100 plus yard rushing game since late November. Mixon ain't playing well, and he ain't gonna do anything against Donald and company. That should make Cincy one dimensional and over-reliant on Burrow to sling it, which plays right into LA's strength. Letting the defensive line pin their ears back and just attack. Attack they will, cause this game is gonna be an under. I'm putting $330 on the under, and for those that think I'm capping, I got the receipts right here. Here comes the money. Money, money, money. <laughs> dollar, dollar. Dollar, dollar. If you watched my first ever YouTube video back in September, which you probably didn't because nobody watched it, uh, not even myself, I did say this about Matt Stafford and the Rams before week one. I'm all in on the Rams. They're one of my NFC Championship bets. Why? Matt Stafford is a huge upgrade at QB1. Sean McVay finally has a guy that can push the ball downfield. And I think the Rams are going to beat the brakes off a team. This is the part where I take my victory lap to heal my bruised ego after I blew my retirement account on crypto. But this is also the part where I tell you Stafford is playing better than Burrow right now, though the national media won't tell you that. This is Stafford's stat line after three playoff games, and this is Joe Burrow's stats this postseason. Stafford is better in every single metric. Every one. Heck, Matt even has more rushing yards than Burrow this postseason. Seriously, look it up. And Stafford has done that arguably against much better defenses than Burrow. And despite that, this is how the national media speaks on that man's name. I don't trust his big game backbone, his football backbone. There's something in there. He's got that haywire gene going on where he can go haywire. He can unravel on you when you least expect it. And we're going to say what we've always said about Matthew Stafford. If he had better people around him, he would have won playoff games. I do not care. When I watch Matthew Stafford play right now, I don't see the consistency I need to see for four quarters. Look. The Rams have the superior defense. They got the quarterback playing just as well. But here's their third advantage, Sean McVay. Besides having a supermodel girlfriend and a memory like an elephant. Second and seven on the Saints seven. What happens? Oh, Josh Reynolds touchdown off schedule play versus a three man rush. 
You're absolutely Are right. Are you kidding me? McVay should be hardened from his Super Bowl loss three years ago to the Patriots. Back when Cincy's coach, Zach Taylor, was a lowly assistant on McVay's staff. And this time, McVay doesn't have to game plan against Billy Belichick, an all-timer. No, he gets the game plan against his own pupil that has a career winning percentage of, wait for it, 34% in the regular season. The worst of any coach to ever advance to the Super Bowl. Seriously. I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm not buying this Bungles hype one bit, especially after what the city of Cincinnati did to this man. Never forget. The Rams buy a million to cover and win this game with relative ease. Here comes the money. Since I'm picking the Rams to get the dub, the safe bet right here would be Matt Stafford. Y'all know how it goes. The MVP is a quarterback's award. 31 of the previous 55 winners have been signal callers. And I did just praise the hell out of Stafford, but I ain't picking him. There's two reasons for that. One, he's overdue an interception. Maybe two. I mean, there's a reason the man led the league in INTs with 17 this season. In fact, it's the only the third time in NFL history that the league leader in interceptions made the Super Bowl. The other two were Jim Kelly and Eli Manning. But reason two, and more importantly, Cooper Cup is having one of the best offensive seasons in NFL history. White Boy is the first ever receiver to hit over 2,000 yards receiving in a year. Per game, over a 20 game sample size, he's averaging 116 yards and a TD. Every defense knows he's gonna get the ball and they still can't stop him. Completely unguardable. Speaking of which, this Bengal secondary isn't gonna fare any better. Yes, they played a great second half against the Chiefs, in particular versus Tyreek Hill, but this secondary has been consistently bad all year long. They rank six worst in pass defense during the regular season. In the last 15 years, only two skill players have won the Super Bowl MVP. But I'm predicting Cooper Cup becomes number three, especially at seven to one odds, which I got him at. Here comes the money. Money, money, money. <laughs> Getting the receiver having the best statistical season of all time at plus 700 is pure value. Value that I'm taking any day of the week and twice on Sunday. All right, this is a complete DGEN bet. $240 on the goddamn coin toss. Why, you ask? Well, this is why. I also like to live dangerously. Also, the coin toss all of a sudden has gotten a lot of chatter in the last two weeks because of the Chiefs and two straight overtime games. In both those games, the toss ended up heads, proven sometimes tails does fail. So you know what? I'm riding the hand and I'm going heads again. And yes, I know the previous coin flips have zero bearing on the outcome of this Super Bowl flip. I'm very well aware of the gambler's fallacy, but I need to somehow rationalize a completely random bet that I'm throwing $240 on for no good reason. All right, y'all, those are my Super Bowl bets. I'm either going undefeated or it's gonna be a bloodbath. Really no in between. That's a wrap for me. Let me know in the comments what y'all betting, what are the locks, and as always, let's get this money, y'all. Quit, you don't write checks. <laughs> How do you pay, man? Huh? If you don't write checks, how do you pay these guys? Straight cash, homie. <laughs> <laughs>